Looks like one of the dairy camps that I borrowed from Paul, he had used for bilge water. So, now 20 liters of that. It's in my tank. Those of you who have been around a bit, <laughs> know that I've always had some issues with pre-departure anxiety um, and I think it has to do a lot with the beginning of this journey when I bought my boat Carl it was in a very disastrous state and my first attempt at sailing my sailboat solo were <laughs> Well, one could say dramatic, maybe. At least it felt very dramatic. Now when I look back, I think, oh, it wasn't that bad. But then on the other hand, I think back, and I think, wow, there was a lot of shit going on. Yeah, in my early days, a lot of problems were thrown my way. Lots of problems that I didn't even think were going to happen. Engine failures, holes in the bottom, like water coming into the boat, a shroud breaking, um... Squalls left and right, um, thunderstorms, all these kind of things. I don't know, now it doesn't even seem that much, but... <laughs> Those of you that know the beginnings of Untie the Lines, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's just build up some anxiety. And usually when I'm on the boat for a while and I move the boat for a while, then it gets a lot better. And then I'm in the groove and I feel very confident and it doesn't help that I take these long breaks between sailing and not sailing even though I've been on the boat I haven't been out in a long time and I need to move the boat to Mexico before hurricane season and I don't have a lot of time left so because of all of this free departure anxiety I've been pushing away getting the boat ready and tackling all the things that are on my list to go sailing but obviously at some point I do have to tackle them and this day is today I'm tackling a list I put my work outfit on and I'm gonna start with something that has also been an issue in the past so to get out of this anchorage that I'm in here in El Salvador I have to go over these waves like there is a big bar outside we came in surfing because I have to go over these waves obviously there's gonna be a lot of movement in the boat and then also in the tanks slash diesel tank and since i've had some issues with blocked fuel lines in the past <laughs> a couple of them and my engine then stalling and whatnot i do want to open up my diesel tank and inspect what's in there and if there's any algae try to pump it out with a little pump i mean i'm lucky that i have very good access to my diesel tank but then very good access is also sort of relative because it's a very uncomfortable spot i think it's gonna be a fun first project <laughs> it's one of those things that you it's one of those things that one thinks like ah you know maybe it's not necessary maybe i maybe i just skip it it's probably gonna be fine but then a friend of mine did exactly that and he ended up going out and he had a little bit of a storm happening on the way south and he tried to put his engine on and it was blocked because he didn't do what I'm going to do right now. So, it's a very important job to do. It's not one of the fancy ones, but gotta do what a boat owner has to do, right? So, gonna get right at it. <laughs> There's a lot of booze in here I didn't even know about. I guess it's good that I forgot about it. So on top of the diesel tank, there is a storage area. And it's one of these things, it's a bit like the storage area that I have back aft because it's very convenient to just open up the floorboard here and just throw anything in that's in the way like when you want to get underway quickly so 
In here, there's a lot of interesting things. Okay, there's a teeny tiny problem. I had totally forgotten that Simon, one of my crew, way back then, had built an extra wall in there to keep boxes from moving around. But this extra wall is also preventing me from being able to crawl in there because I used to crawl into this space from the other side, like going in through the storage area and then laying on here and that's how I opened up the tank. Well, it wouldn't be a call project if there wasn't something tricky about it, I guess. <laughs> well, let's do it. This is quite the adventure today with the tank. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I had feared. It was a little bit of algae, but nothing super bad. And mostly it's pretty much on the bottom and it's pretty stuck to the bottom as well. At some point it would be good to empty out the complete tank and clean it. But I took out a couple of the bigger blobs with a pump and the rest doesn't look too bad and I cleaned I tried to clean around the pickup pipe area a little bit because that's obviously where it's gonna go into the engine I did close the tank again and I put all the bolts in but I haven't put the nuts on yet and I think I'm not gonna do it now because it's really uncomfortable and I've been doing a lot of boat yoga today and I think I'm ready for calling this a day. With the tank inspected and most of the algae removed, it's time to head over to Puerto Parada to refuel. Running short on jerry cans aboard Carl, I've borrowed some from my friend and boat neighbor Paul. Luckily, the gas station is just about 300 meters from the dock, and the people that work on the dock are going to help us bring the full jerry cans back. Since my accident, I can't really just carry heavy stuff anymore, and then we just pay them to do it, which they're happy with, and we're happy with. We successfully transported those 86 gallons of diesel from Puerto Parada to my sailboat in Riquilisco. It's been a long day, but the plan is to lift all the fuel onto Carl and get it into the tanks, allowing me to move on to the next projects on my list. Well, I guess things were running a bit too smoothly and I was going too well in my planning and getting ready for everything. We just did a fuel run and picked up like 300 liters of fresh diesel, filled them into my tank, and then I realized pretty much at the end that one of the tanks, like one of the jerry cans, was contaminated. Like we're not talking a little bit contaminated. We're talking like full on contamination because. Looks like one of the dairy cans that I borrowed from Paul, he had used for bilge water. So, now 20 liters of that is in my tank. I'm just so furious, I'm just so furious that I didn't check the cans and I'm furious that I didn't see earlier how bad it was and stopped it and I don't know I have no idea what was in there it looks like oil coolant water like a big mix of it I'm gonna let it settle maybe tomorrow morning I can see if it settled a little bit and 
I'm like in this place where I rely 100% on my engine to get out because I have to get over these crazy waves and then I, I'm looking at like a two to three day full motor probably and I just contaminated my tank with 350 liters of contaminated diesel and I'm like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit annoyed with myself and I'm angry, I'm angry. I didn't need this. I did not need this. <sighs> Fuck. Anyways, I thought I'd just share this beautiful moment of the life with all of you. <laughs> Contemplating the situation for a while, I've reached a conclusion that I don't feel comfortable using this fuel. Uncertain about the extent and nature of the contamination. With limited time to figure out a way to polish it, I've made the decision to attempt selling it locally. So let's see how that goes. Hola, permiso. Tengo un problema. Uh -huh. These fishermen were super nice, but unfortunately they're not able to take my diesel. They're fairly sure that it's not going to be a problem just letting it settle and then pump off the top part and then use it. But I already have some anxiety issues going out there, so I don't really want to put on top of my existing anxiety that I have to worry about my fuels. So they told us we can go to Puerto Triunfo and talk to a man that's called uh, Samuel. It seems that they have a big generator that runs on diesel and possibly he might be able to buy the diesel or be able to polish it or something. Well, definitely when you travel with a sailboat, you get to see places that you would never get to see if you just come as a normal tourist. I have no idea where we are. We're just waiting for the boss here of this private thing. And, um, yeah. No idea what's going to happen next. But hopefully he's going to buy my diesel. Well, it looks like we made a deal. I'm definitely losing money, but I mean, it's fuel that's contaminated so I think they can totally use it but obviously they're not willing to buy fuel same price at the gas station so I'm probably losing about a hundred bucks here but then I feel safer so I think it's worth it we're just gonna pick up two barrels and then we're gonna pump the diesel into the barrels and bring it over here tomorrow and then and then that's it Nuevo. Looks like I caught it right. Nice. This is the second drum that we're getting. So now all we have to do is fill these up with the filthy diesel and bring them back here tomorrow. And then they have a crane and they're going to lift it off. So that's going to be a lot easier than having to shift the diesel lots and lots of times. Ah, gracias. Muy amable. Muy amable. Well, found someone that's going to buy the contaminated diesel, so that's great news. And now today I'm going to open up the tank and then we're going to pump out all the diesel into, into the barrels that we got yesterday and then move them over to Triumfo, to the guy that's going to buy them. I'm going to spare you filming <laughs> opening up the tank again because you just watched a whole video about it and I'm going to catch up with you guys again once I have the tank open and we're gonna start the pumping action so you're not gonna miss out on that fun. Five hours later. <sighs> Done. Open again the box of Pandora. <laughs>
Forward, 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 forward. Take it easy, take it easy. Forward. This is a very, a very typical untie the lines guy in the movie today. This is like... Uh, hey, come on everybody! <laughs> this is why you guys love watching this show. I hope that you appreciate this. Oh yes! Yeehaw! most everything into the barrels and those are gone now and then the last bit that we couldn't get with the bilge pump we pumped out with a hand pump and once the diesel was out I put in a little bit of soap and hot water and then I let it sit overnight so it could slush around a little bit in the tank but there's still algae on the bottom and yesterday I tried to clean it with a small brush but I just can't reach and I have to put my head really far in there so today I built this DIY tank cleaner, <laughs> so <laughs> Paul gave me his toilet brush because mine looks very different. And now I'm going to see if this little gem does the job. I can't say this is my favorite project. <laughs> this actually works quite well. I like it. I can pretty much reach everywhere. And it does take the algae off the bottom. Huh. I should get a pattern for this. Alrighty, the tank is pretty, pretty clean. I rinsed it a couple of times with water and soap and then, um, sponged everything up and then rinsed once again just with water and just get all the rest of the water out and then I'm going to leave the tank open for um, probably a day or so in order to get all the rest of the humidity out, hopefully. That's it. Done. Wasn't all that bad, was it? It was bloody annoying. It was really, this is, this is a shitty job, especially because of the fumes and stuff. It's just really uncomfortable. You have to be in uncomfortable places and it's smelly and unhealthy and tedious. And anyway, so I'll stop complaining. I'll go back to work and this is going to be over soon and I'm going to be out sailing and it's all going to be so nice. Right? <laughs> wow, this has been quite the unexpected challenge. I must admit that the diesel contamination saga has stressed me considerably, considering the limited time of preparing my departure here. However, it also reaffirmed me that keeping an open mind and avoiding frustration mode often leads to finding a way out of the problem. I can't deny my relief that this is now behind me. The tank is clean and filled up with fresh fuel. It seems we're nearly ready to depart for Mexico. But more about that next time. <laughs>